Nick, were you, were you a bottom of the ball pit kid? No. In fact, I don't even remember going. I mean, I've obviously I obviously would ball go pit. in the ball but pit. But do you remember those free kids that would just sit in the bottom and then just like be like, they'd be like, anaconda attack. I, I was, wouldn't I was, sit in the I bottom, was, but the uh, bottom tantalized me. I was way me. more into navigating kids. the tubes and then ultimately getting into a fist fight in one of the junctions. With <laughs> yeah, yeah, the junctions <laughs> yeah. were fucking wild, bro. Just into a when four tubes come together, <laughs> yeah. dude. Oh. And then it just smelled, it, like it always smelled like other people's shoes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then so just bad. beating the fuck out of a kid in one of those junctions. And then come, <laughs> it's coming out the other end, like, they'll never catch me. What a, what a little piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> just some fucking, just completely sheltered kid who's mm. his first time in the fucking tunnels. Welcome to and the your tunnels. little feral ass is just wailing on some little Chinese guy. Nah, I mean, half the time other kids would start. That's the thing as I miss being a kid is you could find other like violent kids. That's true. That's true. You know, kids are sociopaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I never got, I don't think I got into too many altercations in the tubes, but mm -hmm. I did love, the bottom did thrill me, but I was too, I couldn't stay too long down there. It was scary. It was scary, but I loved it. It was, uh, yeah. I don't remember them being that deep, though. When you're a little when ass you're kid, small yeah, but shit. I don't recall being. It 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 uh, simulated the sense of drowning. I think for me, or bit. maybe I had like a. I, I'm a well, little. That's what you think. That's what you think because it's. Yeah, I I do feel like I was a little claustrophobic. I was never fully at ease in those tubes. Yeah, that's right. It fucked fucked me up a little bit, and the the idea that some people could like were so comfortable in there, like some kids were just hanging out. Like mm -hmm. you'd you'd go by a junction and it would be like a little shanty town sometimes. Dude, it, I feel like I now am missing those tubes greatly. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to just be, exist in a world that was tubes. <laughs> yeah, and crawl around. Well, that's what you that's what you would imagine. You're like, damn, this is the world. You'd be like, yeah. I gotta have my own little kingdom. Yeah, it's like kind of like re that show recess. Imagine the tubes from Discovery Zone, but you can bring a gun and then awesome. Yep. Tubes, make the tubes a little bigger, you know? Let's mm -hmm. make them double three three times the size. Imagine, yeah. You're going through the tube, and then you'd go the wrong way, and then suddenly you're in a junction, you're being robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. six-year-olds. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's like a very post-apocalyptic thought, that that's just the world mm -hmm. that we will yeah, all it feel, it fe Yeah, it felt like that. Some kind of little post-apocalyptic type shit. Yeah. I always, I mean, I don't know. We're, this is what we're all like is chaos. That's mm -hmm. probably what it was like to be in the Viet Cong. I had, I had a they had mad tubes. I had a know? recurring fantasy when I was a kid that I had access to some kind of underground tunnel that went to a room, like a panic room, mm -hmm. that had monitors that I could launch missiles. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the monitor situation is so good. <laughs> I was like, why would a six-year-old need that? You know what I had? You know what I thought? <laughs> Am I going to go to war? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who called me gay. <laughs> yeah, the guys that molested you. Uh huh. Um, well, I what I always dreamed of was an underwater layer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have a fucking submarine. Like I, a, I like yeah. a manatee. Like no, stop with no, no like a mermaid. Imagine himself accidentally wandering into <laughs> no. the the Everglades and no. getting hit by a motorboat. No, 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 no I'm not a manatee. <laughs> I am a man with a big ass submarine no, and good. also a kingdom underwater. Just, People love manatees. Yeah. I'm not a manatee. Stop just spinning delicately <laughs> under the that, water. Okay, that part of being a manatee. On Here's land, he, on land, he's so donked he, in the head by a jet ski. No, 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 no. I'm a man with a nice underwater layer, almost like Atlantis, but it would it was like two like a would, bubble. In fact, it was bubble. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Uh, like a, a lot glass of bubbles. bubble. Yeah. But I did a lot of traveling. I would when I was a little kid, I would imagine to go to sleep that I was driving across this giant ocean with my little submarine. Oh, that's cool. That was like a fucking that was a recur that's the kind of fantasy that I had. When I was, I was, a, we I was the king live of my in the jello submarine. <laughs> <laughs> a jello submarine. A jello submarine. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck, dude. Yeah, I remember in a kids magazine I read about a hotel mm -hmm. that was in one of those bubbles. Oh, underwater shit. you could stay overnight see to me and that, I thought that was it. really cool it, it, to me it was something what i desire is not it's not even possible it's science fiction yeah and to even have a fake ass little facsimile or, or whatever of it you ever read twenty thousand of it, yeah. what's it called a facsimile facsimile yeah facsimile could be the way you say it as well see that is you know what i'm glad you pointed that I'm out i'm gonna stop on this because one. this 
This is an example. Wait, why of a don't man, you go? Don't give a shit. What and I'm about to explain. I'm about to explain right now because oh, he just good. got it wrong. Because I got it wrong I out of good get faith. It wrong. I sometimes as, get out it wrong. of good faith. I'm a good. And faith we actor. mock you as a substitute for actually coming up with a joke. No, I get it. Mm-hmm. I know, but sometimes I do get it wrong. No, you don't. You know every time. No. Well, I, and I then just even when you guessing. do, and then even when you do, you do a little wry smile to pretend you did wrong. I know his name. Anyway. <laughs> I would like to go into that room though. I would now as an adult, mm. understanding that my desires are probably never going to happen to be the king of an underwater kingdom. Yeah. I would go to the underwater hotel and check it underwater out. Underwater shit rules. You remember the cruise in Exotica le- level that mm-hmm. was, uh, mm-hmm. of course, underwater? Yep. And of course, who could forget Mario, the underwater, the water world? Yeah, but you had to swim around him. And I hate, <clears throat> I hate all the swimming shit. I don't mind the swimming. The swimming like nauseated me. I hate that. Damn, I don't know why, but I just got a hankering for dipping some McDonald's fries in the sweet and sour. Because we were talking about fucking the 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 bubbles and shit. We were dude. talking about the the, the hospital for the what? for sick kids. Yeah. Oh, the McDonald's. We were talking about Ronald yeah. McDonald's, but we were also talking about the obstacle course, which oh, is a yeah. real Mc. That's where I. That was my tube zone. Was a McDonald's was, on Eastern Avenue. I was Avenue. thinking of Chuck E. Cheese. Interesting. See, I, there was a McDonald's that I went to. That was not, you know how it's like every their franchises. This mm. McDonald's sold like spaghetti. Hell they had like man. a bunch of bullshit. It was on Eastern Avenue like somewhere. Like it was, McDonald's. Yeah, and they had a huge ball pit, like a huge uh-huh. Chuck E. Cheese level. Like uh, mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly where it was now, but I think it was on Eastern Avenue. And they just were not following. Like everything cost a different price. I don't really go to McDonald's a lot as a kid. That was our go-to McDonald's. I think yeah. every time there was a place we ate, it was my, because it was around somewhere my mom had an errand to run. My dad liked Wendy's. Oh, interesting. And I, so we would go to Wendy's, and I remember thinking Wendy's was like sophisticated. Wendy's was always <laughs> exotic to me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa, Wendy's. <laughs> it's square it's square yeah, they have, they have baked potatoes. I, no, I'm, this is this is I can't be seen in McDonald's. Yeah, we're not going to Wendy's. There's a girl I would have sex with <laughs> <laughs> on the cover. <laughs> And Burger King was the fucking bullshit of all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Burger King I never King understood what was going on with Wendy's because it's like there's the Pippi Longstocking is the man. I thought it was Pippi Longstocking as a kid. Uh-huh. I didn't realize Wendy was her own entity. That's another fictional character I wanted some pussy from. Then, Betty Boop. Her father is Dave Thomas, who I also thought was Bob Evans. Interesting. Oh, interesting. I didn't know what Bob Evans was. Bob Evans is just another restaurant. I know now. At the time, I had but no idea. But as a child, I did not know that Bob Evans was not Dave Thomas. I looked at Dave Thomas and he I thought he was the same guy. That's probably also Bob <laughs> Evans. <laughs> if I had to guess. Wait, Wendy is Bob or Dave Thomas's so, uh, daughter. Daughter. Yeah. Daughter, yeah. His really? cartoon daughter. Imagine does he, does starting, he have a real daughter? I think Imagine he had being, a real daughter. No, he Wendy. didn't. Imagine having he didn't? A, just being psychotic and you're like, I'm starting a restaurant about my fictional cartoon daughter. Damn. That's fucking weird, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck Dave Thomas for that one. He yeah. was an orphan. Really? And then he made a... Well, he get pussy? The thing was, is his daughter I, I was... I think he probably his, did. His daughter was killed when he was drunk, and he was uh, in the kitchen trying to make hamburgers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Square, square burgers. And he was trash, and he started a fire, and it killed his family. And he said, if only there would be a place that I could have driven to to get a hamburger, <laughs> mm-hmm. my family would still be alive. So the whole thing started off as like an anti-drinking and cooking at home wow. campaign. Which it, kills a lot of people, as yeah. we all know, getting drunk the and cooking. The amount of... If, if they just repealed these ridiculous <laughs> anti-drunk driving laws... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we could just cut get back to regular... The Harmful regulation mm-hmm. that's killing people yeah. like Dave Thomas's family. Yeah, do you remember when uh, Johnny Riggs got caught with all that child porn? <laughs> no, I remember my mom like having to explain to was me. Was he like the morning zoo was. guy? No, he was like their like one of their main like disc jockeys. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the nineties, like he got I don't know, it was like a heroin bust or something. He was on drugs, but then they found all this fucking child porn. Oh, oh, Jesus double Christ. Christ. Yeah, you know, my mom was like, "Yeah, no, he was looking at naked pictures of children." And I'm like seven, and I'm like, "Oh." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is that wrong? Is it yeah, good? I don't know what the why you would do that. Like I didn't understand beating yeah, it just off. Seems like we a talked, weird we talked about this. We've talked about this before, you and I, but I don't think on the podcast. But like, 
Our moms all have so much child porn of oh, us, yeah. like in the bath. <laughs> my mom had a picture of my ass. Just like so my mom had like a picture of my I was like reading in my room or something naked or whatever. And I was a kid, my mom like came in, she was like, surprise, and like took a picture of me. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And then she like framed it and put it up in the living room. And like friends Just would come over and be like, what ass. the fuck is that? Yeah. You know, and I like hide it. And then I'm like, mom, stop putting this up. And she would do it over and over again. I it's... think she like gets some kind of pleasure out of humiliating me. Mm. Do, you, do you think it's like a deliberate own that your mom is? Oh yeah, absolutely. Put an eight year old version I don't, I don't of your think, ass I don't think in a way where she's like, I think it's funny. I think everything has to be sort of like a power struggle or whatever. That's so hilarious. she has to do it to assert, wow. like uh, you know, I'm the parent, right? Because right, I wouldn't right. listen to her fucking otherwise. <laughs> so she shows everyone she your little ass dick, your little ass little kid dick. No, it was my ass. It wasn't the dick. <clears throat> my mom had the dicks out, dude. We had we had like a we had like oh, a picture. three boys, three yeah. boys. Me and my me and my little brothers just little riding baby watermelons. <laughs> We're just sitting on watermelons with our little dicks out. <laughs> and she just had that like next to like like I might even still be like at my house next to like yeah. my fucking senior just portrait. Just giant on the produce set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, this weird Greek bitch is putting her son's dick. Dick on all the watermelons. <laughs> you, yeah. It's ours now. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> also, this whole thing that we has don't been pay on for it. <laughs> the bath time pictures of like. Oh yeah. Now in retrospect, there were pictures of me and my, my sister was like two and I was yeah. six. Yeah. You know? Just like finger just in a bath. Yeah. <laughs> What? But it's like, what do you do with those pictures, right? It's not yeah, like you you're just have books you're like, you're going to want this when you're older. No, I'm not. No, yeah. no, I'm not going to want that. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah. See, yeah. I think it's kind of funny. You're going to want to see what your dick looks like. Yeah. I think it's you, mean, you know how they like make you do like the handprints in kindergarten? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, and there's like, a, there's like a, a, a wall in your house with pencil markings on it, but of they go dick. horizontal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, age eight, age nine. <laughs> I remember me and my brothers would have as little ass kids like dick measuring contests because yeah. just like, and then one so time like your neon green play school ruler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, goes up. To we would like inches. hold them next to each other. Oh, we had no okay. idea what wow. was. And my dad like walked in. <laughs> He's like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> and because I, I remember the worst one was I, like to cheat. We would get hard. <laughs> like we would be like we would first just measure them soft and then one one of us realized if you get hard your dick gets bigger and yeah. that's when my dad was like all right we gotta fucking you know what's this crazy off. is this is literally how the greeks invented the olympics yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first event, yeah. the first event. boy penis yeah. <laughs> the boy penis event yeah. this is how they invented democracy boy oh, yeah. penis stretching we they had to vote on whose dick was better oh yeah uh <clears throat> yeah it was um that was those were fun times did you ever uh, my my friend, uh, one of my friends from middle school, uh, he was telling his little brother he his move <laughs> when he was like four <laughs> was to be like, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> Close your eyes, <laughs> and he would over and over again put his dick in people's hands. <laughs> like, That's like a cool cute ass, kid, ass dude. little kid. Like who's gonna say no to like a little kid being like, I have a surprise? Yeah. You think he's gonna put like a gummy bear in your hand yeah. or something? He did it to like his mom, his brother's dad, and his teacher <laughs> and kids at school. <laughs> I, I remember being, I remember being in like daycare. This is the king. I was in like daycare and like fucking first or second now. grade and there was these two kids in the back of the van like two boys and they were like uh just making out with each other <laughs> and they were like look we could do it it's not weird or whatever and everyone's like guys stop doing yeah. that they're like tongues out like you know full-on making out with each other that's incredible it was bizarre yeah how I old i'm sorry i don't know they were probably like I don't know, seven. Oh, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? So they didn't know what they were doing, but it's like, you did it in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're going to have to remember this <laughs> yeah. and talk about it on our respective podcasts <laughs> when, we're all, when we're all 30 year old men. Out. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I wish I could remember those guys' names yeah, so, that'd I could, be awesome. so I could so shame we could dox them. them. Yeah, I think one of them actually, it, I don't know, because it's kind of fuzzy who it actually was doing that. Yeah, I just yeah. remember. I think one of them was named Eric, and then I think the other one was this kid, Matt. But there was this kid, Matt, and I forget his last name, but he built a tent 
in the corner of the daycare one time. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and this had to be like 1997 because I remember Titanic had come out and he was obsessed with Titanic. <laughs> oh my God. He loved the movie Pause. so much. Yeah. He had like a picture book of the movie. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You'd like go through, the, you know, and like you would bring it to school and show it. And so he would play Titanic, you know, he would like, you know, as like, a game. Yeah. yeah. He would like, you know, the, he'd play Titanic, you know, whatever. And I remember my favorite thing to do in the daycare center was sign up for the computer area and then hold a magnet to the monitor and destroy <laughs> the monitor. <laughs> my shit I mean, that is all you need to know about you as a human being. <laughs> that is that as a baby, basically, <laughs> <laughs> what you loved, you, what you spared, your hobbies were destruction <laughs> and ruining other people's fun. <laughs> you fucking hold a, hold a magnet to the screen. And then, no shit, I swear to God, blame it on the retarded kid. <laughs> Here's That's a retarded kid named Victor. I'd be like, Victor did it. <laughs> that is he hitting ruled for the, the fucking computer screen and broke it. That's incredible. That's hitting for the Mullen cycle, dude. That's <laughs> yeah. doing everything. Yeah, yeah. Trolling. So, vandalism. Vandalism. Blaming the retarded. Bullying. There was this kid, Matt, and he fucking he was obsessed with Titanic. And then he built a tent in the corner of the room. <laughs> what do you mean on the retarded? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this fucking poor kid. I mean, uh, they knew it was me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but fuck. So this kid, Matt, built a tent in the corner of the room out of, like, blankets and shit. And he, like, propped it up. And then uh, he brought this girl who was, like, like three years younger than him into the oh, tent. Oh, no. And I guess they were playing Titanic in there. Oh, no. And this, this one kid, He drew like, her like one of his French girls? This one kid goes, he peeked his head in there, and then he comes out looking like a ghost. And I don't know what the fuck happened, but he goes, I, I you know, he was like, oh... You know, he like looks shocked, and we, me and my friends are just watching this happen. And he goes up and tells the teacher, like this, uh, the counselor John. <laughs> he, oh, you know, he fuck. says something to him, and John's like, you know, drops everything and does that like walk where he's, you know, of speeding up with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, just God. the variable speed of him like fucking increasing. You know, how is he at that tent in like three seconds, and he looks in there, and then he just rips that fucking. Key. <laughs> Get out of there. Jesus I don't know what the fuck Christ. he was doing there. Oh, no. But he ripped that kid out of there. So I'm assuming he was like, you know, molesting that girl. Or Jesus. Dude. <laughs> That's hilarious. Just like in Titanic. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I was, was really be- hoping for a wholesome turn. No, somewhere. no, no. It's, it doesn't make what I was doing with the computer sound so bad now, does it? Yeah. <laughs> I was just learning how magnets work. <laughs> Fuck man, this this girl in my preschool. I remember I had a I had a partner. You got partnered up for like, and she wanted to play house all the time. Yeah, but her playing house was putting a baby doll in her dress and then yelling at me for not having a job. <laughs> I swear to God, and it fucking freaked me out. I was like this little innocent ass fucking kid, and I was like, uh, I don't like playing with Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you don't do anything right. That was what house was. It was fucking. So, and like the, she would like pop the baby out and scream yeah. and then yell at the kid. I'm not even joking. I remember the, like when we were, yeah, in like pre, pre K, like kids would play house and then like the closet with all the clothes and shit in it, they had this fucking, uh, this like green thing that mm-hmm. looked like AstroTurf. Yeah. But it covered your entire body. And yeah. I just thought that was the coolest one. So I would always choose to be the lawn <laughs> when we played house just so I could wear that thing. <laughs> then I did nothing. I would just wear it. <laughs> <laughs> just lay down on the floor. Yeah, I wouldn't lay down or anything. I guess that's autism. Yeah, no. Our thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to be the light fixture. <laughs> I remember when I was like eight or nine, my friend Max like figured out how to tape things on VCR. Yeah. Mm. So he'd go into TV Guide and then tape Real Sex, HBO Real Sex. Hell yeah. yeah. So then we like have sleepovers at his house and watch Real Sex. But like, Real Sex wasn't porn. It was a documentary about sex. So a yeah. lot of the time it was like. You know, like seventy-five-year-old hippies like right, doing right, a right. circle jerk, right? Like right. that was our introduction to like <laughs> to like naked people and jerking off. And like it was just like it was like it wasn't actually. Did you guys beat off in the same room? No, we couldn't beat off at, even at that point. Oh, we were like ten, nine or ten years old. I couldn't beat off. Did I could. You, did you ever do like beat off where everyone's beating off in the same room at like a sleepover? Um, Everyone picks a corner and beats off. No, we did a thing once where like my friends. We all had to go to the bathroom and like come. Oh hell yeah! Come like to prove that we could come. To pictures <laughs> of your mom? No, it's to to like Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. So pictures of Adam's mom. They would all pass them around. Yeah. 
Uh, beat off the average mom. <laughs> My mom is. <laughs> What? Say it. Say it. Sexy? She's a she's a lovely woman. Hot. Yeah. <clears throat> Just she like really I had a friend that had a hot mom. We found her dildo one time. Ooh. I don't know why we were going through their shit, but I remember <laughs> my, I told my, you my guys... friend Zach finding his own hot mom's dildo, oh, and he's like, terrible. "What the fuck is this?" And he was like. No, you know, because he's like <laughs> holding it in his hand, just like vibrator, no. and like I'm like, yes, no. <laughs> yes, no. dude. She was so she looked like Holly Berry. Oh, she was so friend, hot. My friend Robert, like the house that we used to all get drunk at and yeah. like get stoned at in high school, was because he had a single mom, oh, and God. she was a school nurse during the week, and then on the weekend she would dance, mm. oh, and so shit. his house would always be free, Jesus, throughout the weekends. Christ. But she had that's legit, some Vegas shit right she, there. That's Vegas as fuck. She had legit the biggest hit of all time and like <laughs> at like 15 years old she's she was the uh, like 100%. ideal of hottest she's yeah, the yeah, yeah. complete ideal of hottest woman you right, ever seen right, like right. and we were all fucking in love with her and she used to fuck with us dude she used to like answer the door in a towel and shit oh, and be God. like oh i didn't know you boys were coming over it was a like, towel on her head no yeah, yeah just on her head yeah, yeah. completely it naked. was stuffed into her pussy yeah and it was like it, in retrospect it was really sad there was like a revolving door of like deadbeat boyfriends oh, and stuff god but like you know, we got to did you know, anybody experiment with mom? drugs and alcohol. Uh, no one fucked his mom. Not even but, later, but but uh, we all furiously no, beat of off course. to his mom. Uh, it, was, it was funny. Was, like those are prime our, beat off. Years one of our too. friends growing up, this uh, my friend like Amir, his uh, uh, his mom had this friend Bill who would come over. Like they both like they knew each other. I think they both taught at like the community college or something, or he did, or I don't, I don't remember exactly what the story was, but they were like colleagues of some right. capacity. And, uh, so they, uh, you know, Bill would always be over. And then I started making fun of him. Like your mom's fucking bill. Your mom's like, you know, your dad with bill or whatever. Oh, no. We would, like laugh about it and like laugh and be like, no, she's not dude. Shut up. And then, uh, and then yeah, his parents got divorced <laughs> and, <laughs> Bill Bill's moved in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill's his dad now. That's so fucking funny. Yeah. I think I told the story. A couple of chippies. I told the story already <laughs> on the podcast. When I was in community college, I took like a marketing class. And there was these oh, two, yeah. yeah, there's two dudes that were like, basically, the idea is it's a 24 hour beer, weed, and cigarettes delivery. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys were underage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, they were probably like 25. Oh, okay. Which makes it worse. Even yeah, yeah. you're 25 years old and you're still like, yeah, weed. Yeah. I got to incorporate weed into my homework assignments. Being, yeah, dude. <laughs> I love fucking smoking. It's like making bones. a bong in ceramic, ceramics class, trying to get it. <laughs> That's actually tight. Did you ever yeah. do that? Could you do Everybody that? did that. I didn't do it, but people did it all the time. I never made a bong. I made a G bong. You guys were a G bong? bong and get fucked up. Yeah, I get yeah. so high. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, let's go. I love making bongs out of fucking trash. Yeah. That's all G bongs are. Right, like, yeah, you just put an old milk milk carton in a in a bathtub. You yeah. can use anything, dude. Gatorade bottles. Any yeah. Gatorade bottles. What's the dumbest shit you've ever smoked out of? Uh, is an Altoid tin, probably. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, we used to make pipes out of just like pens. Tin, remember tin the foil. pens? Yeah. Tin foil. The Child tin foil is pipe. basically jail. And then it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, you fucking, you make dumb shit out of dumb shit. And then you want like the biggest prizes for you are ramen and Doritos. <laughs> right, right. You, you're you're trading trading a slim gym people. if you're lucky. You ever meet like kids when you were like in elementary school that smoked? <laughs> they like smoked Cigarettes? way too early. Yeah. There yeah. was kids that were like eight that were smoking. You're like, no. what are you doing? What are you talking about? <laughs> really? In fucking uh, yeah, Montgomery yeah. County? Yeah, like one or two. Crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there were definitely kids that smoke cigarettes. And That's he hilarious. smoked with cigarettes. Yeah. There were dudes like dropping acid and fucking in like seventh grade at my school. You went That's, to like a weird school. That's, That's yeah. a little older. It was though. Hillbilly though. It was Hillbilly school. Yeah, you went to Hillbilly school, right? There were kids fucking in my seventh grade. I remember hearing about it and just being absolutely shocked. Dude, exactly. I was I in was, gym. I got a, a <laughs> I remember. I no. got sad and afraid. I remember exactly yeah. what happened. I was in gym. We just played basketball. I was feeling good about myself. And there's just like fucking black kids <laughs> on the side. This one kid has an awesome afro, and they're literally just like making fun of some girl because they all fucked her, and they're like, and they're like, oh shut up, y'all. And I was just like, they're like, yeah, she sucked my dick, and I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like eavesdropping, they're like, hey yo, he listening? And they just made fun of me. I was like, huh? I just left in a huff because I was so fucking scared. That I they remember catch me listening to them fucking talking about fucking. I remember two kids fucked the summer after sixth grade, and I still to this day remember their first and last name, both of them. Say them right now. Did you watch? <laughs> no. Say them right now. 
No, I'm not going to say, say the first name. It was a kid named Eldon and a girl named Alicia. And now their last names? Uh, the last uh, Alicia Keys, yeah. <laughs> Eldon Baylor, Eldon, El- El- Eldon Campbell, the old center for the Los Elton. Angeles Lakers. Okay, yes, yeah, Elton that, Brand. Yeah. Elton Brand. Um, when I was a kid, I was going through my mom's uh, underwear drawer. I can't remember what I was looking for. Oh, but I remember I, the one, the second one. But I found. Uh, I know the underwear drawer. I found. Uh, Does that fuck your mom? What I thought was a condom, <laughs> and I freaked out. But it was just like one of those. <laughs> One of those eggs, legs, you know, those like... Oh, yeah, 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 It was yeah, just yeah, plastic. Yeah. But I was such an idiot that I thought... How old were you? A condom was like a plastic Biggest egg that you <laughs> yeah, put over yeah. your dick. <laughs> that you melt over <laughs> your dick. <laughs> I like threw it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think I was probably seven. Did your mom fuck? Yeah. Nice. We found my my friend's mom's vibrator one time. I don't know why we were going through their shit, but he <laughs> found his. I was watching him pull the vibrator out of her like nightstand, and his mom was f- so hot. <laughs> and he's like, "What the fuck is this?" And he was like, "No." <laughs> no. He was like horrified, and we were like, "Yes." <laughs> it was in your mom's pussy. Let me smell it. He's like, "Get out! Everyone, get out right now!" <laughs> that is an emergency. Yeah, for a kid with a hot mom. <laughs> She's yeah. like, she's like, Zach, why is there a bunch of saliva all over my vibrator? <laughs> oh, my friends were over. Yeah, why does it smell like gushers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is there that, that candy spray and air that, wrappers? That's, <laughs> uh, that's such a funny visual, like a bunch of like 12 year olds sucking off like a huge dildo <laughs> yeah. because yeah. they're like, it was on your mom's <laughs> pussy. Yeah, yeah. It's not gay because it touched your mom's yeah. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> just giving everyone, taking <laughs> turns. Dude, I, 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 taking <laughs> and then they're just sucking each other's spit off. Yeah. <laughs> I had a manager at a pizza restaurant I worked at and uh he told me this story. He was like when he was in junior high, him and his friend uh would put socks over each other's dick and then jack each other off. What the and he's no, like, that, no, that's not well, he's gay. like, it's not gay because there's <laughs> socks involved. That's uh <laughs> No, that just makes it gay with a no. foot fetish element. That's so much gayer, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so if you do that, gay. if you if two guys yeah. jerk each other off, but they're both thinking yeah. about women, that's called parallel sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, really what me is. and my friends do is we get those uh, those like really those, really those, those, uh, those sticks that have the dinosaur head on the top that you oh, can, yeah, the bite you can make it bite with yeah. the claw, and then we jerk each other off from a distance. Yeah. That's I totally actually fun. what I do is I climb into one of those claw machines at Dave and Buster's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys have to. Get the claw right over my dick and pull yeah, it up yeah. and down. And it's not remember, gay, dude. Do you because it's so game? hard to do. Yeah, exactly. Because it's so difficult. <laughs> so it's an accomplishment. Do you remember that thing? That, <laughs> Yo, can we get one of those with a fucking pocket pussy on the top <laughs> and try and jerk each other off? That I really, actually sounds hilarious. That's, that's actually a mini game in the next Mario party. I really <laughs> think you guys should it's do a, a, a <laughs> one where you're around a table and you're all jacking off under the table like, while, yeah, you're to, while you're trying to have that's, a I'm pretty sure that's what Texas Hold'em is. I've never played, but based on the name. No, that. That's true. Yeah, yeah, when you go all in, that's when you just come in everyone yeah. else's mouth. Yeah. Do you remember uh, that thing, the stranger, which was like if you sit yeah, on your yeah, hand yeah, and then it goes and then you jerk and someone you, else's you, off on the bus? You, well, you, yeah, that's you go, yeah, you go yeah, outside yeah. and you find a stranger. You, you find a stranger. And you, <laughs> <laughs> you suck his yeah. and he fucks you in the ass <laughs> while you give him a thumbs up with that numb hand. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you don't even feel that thumb going <laughs> You don't out. feel that well, thumb. <laughs> that gay ass thumbs up. <laughs> uh, Did you ever stranger yourself? No. I could never get it to work. I was just good I enough with my imagination to pretend that I was, you know, what, yeah, like, what? Yeah. See, I would just normally go numb anytime I had an erection. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I started having flashbacks and then I would <laughs> pass no, out. No, not emotionally. And, yeah. 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 circulation. I would black out and then, you know, <laughs> wake up. And you had just happened. such high blood pressure <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> the second you got an erection, yeah. you just ate che- Cheetos and Slim Jims. Yeah. Oh, man. Just pulls <laughs> Tony Soprano. I one time after I watched Road Trip, I don't know if I told this story, I put a candle in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know why that's so funny is because you already look like a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, just, you just made yourself a jack-o'-lantern. Remember Hookups, the brand Hookups? Yeah, those t-shirts? Yeah. Wait, what's Hookups? Hookups was a brand. It was a brand. Sun sold it. It was like a skateboard brand back in like the late mid to late 90s yeah and nice. the like all the hookups. t-shirts had like and they had uh, big titty jacks and, and, and animation with... girl boards you remember girl boards yeah yeah I did don't. you skate I remember Nick? briefly yeah, yeah that was I, had terrible a, I had a phase i was yeah. really bad yeah that's yeah. more embarrassing than what skateboarding skater boys why why 
Because hentai it's, it's a sport. It's, it's natural, dude. Hentai is natural. No, skating is cool, that. dude. Nah, well, in my skating. middle school, you either were prep and you wore Abercrombie, Hollister, that kind of stuff, or you were a skater. And I went skater, dude, obviously. Yeah, I broke the mold, dude. I was a rock boy. Yeah. You're a rocker? I was wearing well, because I was well when you're one of you only dressed like Zach Amico. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're one of only you ten white people in a high school, you have to you have to like rock and roll, I think. I was like I would totally pretend like I would get like in tenth grade. What like Elvis? No, nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. <laughs> that stole her jackets. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was dressed out. like the Fonz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> like black people raising an eyebrow and stop and he's walking down the hallway. He's like, one o'clock, two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, this dude's gay. I think he's gay or something. My Why is this gay, gay dude, dude always talking about this clock? <laughs> <laughs> we going around the clock. Does that you know what time it is? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what was I talking about? Um, oh, I was. Uh, I went to Greece one summer, and my cousin had like the greatest hit. My cousin was a metalhead, and then I just came back, and I loved, I loved Zepp and Black Sabbath, and I grew my hair out, dude. And I, oh, I had long luscious, hair, all of high beautiful, school. Beautiful, luscious curls. Yeah, and uh, and I was just wearing Sabbath t-shirts and Zepp t-shirts. Oh, I went. I I went from skater to uh, ska and pop ska. punk. So yeah, uh, you were a skater boy, and then sh she said, see, "See you later, see boy." You later, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Did you guys ever want to fuck Avril Lavigne? Um, no. Y yeah, Come until on. I saw her without makeup. I remember like. <laughs> But my son, I forget, one friend of mine, like, so was rude. like, check out this picture of Avril Lavigne without makeup. And we were all like, ew, <laughs> she's disgusting. <laughs> it's just 14 year old pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Nordstrom's a classy place. They don't get paid that much, they but don't. it is very hard to get that job. Really? Because I talked I talked to a, a Nordstrom guy one time. He used to talk to him. I'm like, so what? I'm like, how the fuck do you end up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, I was so curious because I'm like, this isn't like being a mall Santa. No. You know, and he's like, no, it's it was fucking very hard to get this job. That's hysterical. Yeah. What's the what hoops does he have to jump through? I don't remember. It was this was already like, you know, was, I was a teenager. I was right. working at the mall and and yeah. I, I just you're hanging out with him afterwards in his car. Exactly. In the well, parking lot. It's weird because I, 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 you know, it's your memory kind of gets jumbled up, but I, f and I know that it's impossible because I used to shit at the Sears. Right. You That's know, where they had the good bathroom. They had a good bathroom. Yes. No, I mean it. And, uh, and, and which I, mall is this for the listeners? Lake Forest. Lake Forest. Yeah. And I would go shit at the Sears, but then it's like, maybe it wasn't even a Nordstrom's because now I'm having like, now it may have been just a pianist mm -hmm. at a restaurant yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I went to one time because it's and like, he was lying to yeah. try and molest him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I never, because they don't have a pianist at Sears. And I, no, it was, certainly not. I was definitely shitting at the Sears. Mm, interesting. You know? Um, was it in the bathroom at Sears? It was. <laughs> yeah, it was are. in the Craftsman's Craftsman's Tool Aisle, <laughs> which is another thing they don't have at Sears anymore. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That was the coolest part of Sears. Yeah, because it's some shitty store. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you're like, this store sucks dick. It's but not the, as good as the other ones. The Craftsman. And then you take that. a right turn. It's like, oh, this is a fucking Home Depot now. This is fucking yeah, tight. yeah, yeah. And it's not, but it's not as scary as Home Depot. Yeah. As a little kid, you were scared it's big. Sears, you understand a department store. Yeah. A department store, a child runs wild. You hide in between the little things. Yeah. You know, you've probably had some nice fucking Sarku Japan. I have another, yeah, another early memory of being, and I don't even know what mall it was, because it, it was had to be somewhere in Virginia, because I remember being with my grandmother, mm -hmm. and then um, we went to the mall and it's like this is one of those things it's like did something happen i don't know because it's 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 hard to explain but i remember being i remember being in the mall and then going into like a stock room thinking it was a dressing room and it was like <laughs> oh, it was no. a room i shouldn't be in oh, no. and then um <laughs> and there was like the walls were like some kind of like it was just like a weird red red and mauve color scheme mm -hmm. It was just sort of like visually offensive. Yeah. And then that's it. That memory ends. And then I remember being in. Um, and now you have just sent memory. It's a man's cologne. A defensive driving class. I and mean, watching a video. 
And in the video, <laughs> this was years later. So this is a decade later. In the video, they're, yeah. they're explaining how anti-lock brakes work. And um, they were like, why you, sh- maybe you should, like, this is prior to anti lock brakes. I forget the point of the video, but it's like if you're hydroplaning, you're on ice, you should pump the brakes or something. Right. So it shows a guy pumping the brakes, but it's a shot of, like, I don't know, like a, the, the, the floor area, the driver's side floor area of like a, uh, I don't know, like a Cutlass Sierra or mm-hmm. something. And it had the same kind of red, there was like a red velvet interior to the mm. thing. And it, there was something that was like, oh, this is, <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> you know? God damn, dude. And I have no idea what it was. Mm. And But it was just one of those things. How where, old were you at that mall the first time? I don't know. It must have been like four. Uh, uh, ro Yeah. <laughs> four or five. I don't think. Some anything. gay man in a velvet tuxedo sucked your dick. I don't think. Because I feel like those are the kinds of things. You, I don't believe in like repressed memories. I yeah. do believe in like inexplicable emotional trauma. Mm-hmm. That's like. You know, because it's like there's different levels of trauma. Yeah, you no, could just be you could just yeah. be misplaced in the mall for a second. Totally, and as a four year old, yeah, so scared. I remember going into a bathroom, and then a kind stranger promises to take you to your grandma. I remember going into a bathroom one time, and have you ever seen those bathrooms in older buildings where they have the round sink with the pedal? Yes. You know, the first time I saw one of those, it would sca- I would horrify. Me. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I went in the bathroom, and I was like, "What the fuck is this machine?" <laughs> It was like something out of nightmares. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm trying to think of like shit that scared the fuck out of me as a little ass kid. <sighs> I used to have this recurring nightmare that I would be in like um in like school when I was a kid and then but the school always had an additional wing, like mm-hmm. a, a a secret wing. Mm-hmm. And then there was always an element of like, you know, your clothes are missing or something sure. like that. Or, you, you know, you don't have your homework or something. But then I would go into the bathroom and I need to use it. And then the bathroom would be all just like sort of like, you know, the way like um, like at one of those like refineries or like where there's just pipes. Mm-hmm. The floor is just all these weird pipes. And there's no like I don't know how to use any of these pipes. Mm. And they all kind of just like interlock and you can't use the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> but that was like a that was like a recurring nightmare. I Damn, I don't remember any of my fucking nightmares as a little ass kid. Really? Not really. I think I spent so much time in my subconscious. I was you know, scared of the one the thing. The theater of the mind. The theater of the mind, of course. <laughs> I, remember, I remember one time going to my mom, and it was the first, I was like three, or I was like four, and I had a memory of being two, and my brother's just being born. And, and you were looked, molested by a guy in a velvet tuxedo. And then a guy in a velvet tuxedo, and then he came through and he sucked my It'd be funny if we were both we were abducted by a, a pedophile. <laughs> Just the, they're calling yeah. him the the Maryland child rapist, <laughs> and we were both molested. And then the guy's driving around. And he's like, "Well, you suck my father's dick." <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like, That's the only explanation in, in, in dog kennels. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and we're like, "What the fuck?" And then we're yeah. just dropped off wherever. Right. And then uh, and he he threw a donut in the back seat, and I got most of it. You've been you've been mad about it the whole yeah. our whole lives. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, I don't know where the parody song thing came from. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to start Skyping or uh, Twitch streaming me playing Final Fantasy, and I want you guys, it's going to be $45 a month, <laughs> and I want everybody to subscribe to me playing Final Fantasy. You're not even talking. You're yeah. just silently just playing silently the game. <laughs> and I'll sit here next to an anime pillow, and I expect to check for $82 million a week. <laughs> I mean, that's what Twitch is, dude. I just, and I love video games. You know, I like, grew up playing like uh, video games and i like would read electronic gaming monthly and then it just turned into this like gross weird culture of people that are man children yeah and it's like it is you, fucking you can't bizarre. continue to be 11 years old for the rest of your fucking life no that's the point of what our generation has become is yeah people that just want to be kids yeah well so. it's like at least we found sort of a thing that's kind of yeah. We get to be children, but we, at least we're doing something. No, what we do happens at bars. We wear hoodies. We wear hoodies, dude. Yeah, I know. And we hats. Hats. Exactly. Track pants. We say cuss words. You guys are both wearing <laughs> racist. Sweats. We're two. Uh, two of the three of us are wearing sweats yeah, right now at, at work. Yeah, I'm wearing Nike shorts under this. Yeah, we're so all wearing sneakers. I'm wearing sweats because I went to the gym two and a half weeks ago and I haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> I got pretty close to going to the gym. I did put my gym shorts on. Yeah, dude. I but go maybe to the gym. it's because just the world is. 
sucks and no one has any like hope for the future. So no, they, they get, deliberately they I get did, buried in no, nostalgia. Those no, were deliberately no. stunted by both their parents and marketing. I yeah, mean, every day like, capitalism. I mean, in the early nineties, in the late eighties, early nineties, shut they, the fuck up, Adam. They started really fucking <laughs> aggressively, <laughs> aggressively pushing that fucking like tell your parents buy me you know buy me bone storm or go to hell. Right. The, that the that those classic ads, Simpsons that's awesome. that we yeah, all yeah. know and love. Yeah, it's great. That's like that created this fucking generation it's not just marketing it's also you know the school system and you know people fucking telling their children that they they could be president before they knew the fucking alphabet in mm -hmm. kindergarten mm -hmm. and it does create a sense of entitlement and i think that does create a lot of like problems with like cultural narcissism the concept that everyone's the special yeah, yeah. But what does that have to do with the whole like and a lot obsession of that, a lot with of that, 90s a lot of that, and nostalgia and a lot all that, of that stuff? Because you created a, 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 an inverse system where the best time in someone's life is between the ages of 5 and 15. Yeah, it's true. You right, know? right, right. No, the, no, no. Even earlier than that, middle school sucked. It's, it's elementary school that people are all that, into. That's what 5 is. That's why I said Childhood. 5 to 15. Yeah. Your 15 child fifteen is middle. Whatever. You just wanted a, a point to have a point of contention here. So you no, I just to what I, I said. just di I disagreed with the range. I, I agreed with everything you said up until the age range that you. So you'd like to lo lo knock it down a year. I think or everyone two. wants to be a baby. You know, yeah. it seems. No, there's definitely. I agree with that thing in terms of peaking in middle school because it was a fucking simpler ass time. It's like when you're an adult, the, the only things you should be thinking about is everyone in your life that isn't around anymore and all the relationships you fucked up mm -hmm. and how no matter what you get, you don't really care about it. These are the things adults think about. Not to, wait, well, what if Hillary was fucking Harry Potter? No. Hate yourself. Regret every decision you've ever made. It's true. Fear death while simultaneously embracing it. Embracing it. it. Yeah. Ah, fuck. That's what adulthood yeah. is. It's not yeah. this regressive, weird... You know, baby fantasy bullshit. Yeah, but it is a fa it is it's so wishing fucking... you were fucking dead and be terrified of you know that actually happening. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly it. It's so it's so fucking like comforting to think about just like getting home, eating fucking hot pockets, and playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City. You know what I mean? Like that's what it is. It it's is not scary. comforting for me. It feels honestly, it, it feels like being plugged into a fucking dialysis machine and laying down on a deathbed. Yeah, no, for Sounds me, it good. feels like I'm taking a time machine and accelerating closer to my death. Yeah. Right. That all that regressive shit gives me like a, a like a, like a, a sincerely a fucking weird nausea. Like I can't even, I have, I have trouble watching old Simpsons episodes. Really? Yeah. Like we, we had one night where we went over to Romaine's place and we were watching like season five or whatever. And I'm laughing at the jokes, but it's almost like triggering in the sense that it's like, you know, life goes on. You can't keep clinging <clears throat> to these things that were around mm -hmm. 20 years ago. You need to find right. some way to. It does feel like passing to make time. this moment in my life, you know, substantial or mean something or like, you know, outside of doing a shit ton of drugs, I really don't know how to do it. Yeah, I mean that's why I I, well, it's not drugs success. Are, drugs are fake. It's, it's not success. It's not even like you know uh, uh, feeling creatively fulfilled. Even I think I, 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 first of all, I haven't had a project I've worked on in probably two years where I've been happy with. I, I haven't finished anything in two years. Right. Well, this has kept going. This we, isn't. This isn't a project. It's this not is a project. me having a conversation once a week. There's no honing. There's Twice. no editorial process. There's nothing. One hundred percent. There's nothing. Yeah, 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 nothing right, that right. makes me feel like I'm. I'm just doing saying there's a consistency. Right. I've, I've the, where we thought that this was. Yeah, but this would happen anyway. It's just a fucking conversation. Right, we yeah. would hang out twice this, a week at least. This isn't a product. It's true. Yeah. yeah. This, is, <laughs> this is, like, I make fun of Twitch, but this is, there is zero difference between Twitch. podcasting and Twitch. We're Instead making, of gaming, I'm just jokes. complaining about my, yeah, but I would make jokes anyways. Yeah, 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 yeah. but this is for the, for the people, dude. We're sharing it, dude. We're sharing our... But I know, personally, I completely understand what you're saying because I feel the same way. Anyhow, it puts I do me, as well. It puts me, yeah, doing any of that kind of shit, watching fucking, you know, movies I've already seen or playing video games. Have you ever finished a retiring. project? I yeah, never finished, I've finished anything. Plenty. I plenty. You know, I mean, I, I had... I start things, but then I never finish. I wrote every one of those Nicole. I wrote like 350 articles as Nicole. Right, right. That was great. Yeah. But yeah. larger things I struggle with. You know, mm -hmm. anything over 5,000 words I can't finish. I just can't do it. You know, I'll get what distracted. What is 5,000 words? 10 pages? Something like that. Yeah. I think it's more than that. But whatever. Yeah, I know what you're saying, dude. And I don't fuck... I mean, who who fucking knows? I, the only thing that helps for is stand-up for me or being creative in some way. Feeling like yeah. you're writing... Well, I haven't bit. written a new bit in literally a fucking year. 
A year and a half. Yeah, my stand up sucks dick bitch. now. I can't. Well, I'm just. I haven't been doing stand up yeah. for like the last year. All maybe. it takes is doing it and getting back yeah. in the swing. You, I know. Get, you were getting there, Nick. I'm, getting... I'm. I'm. I'm comfortable on stage again. Yeah, like, that's the I, first. I, I was in a weird. Yeah, no, I know how to get it. But I mean, I've been doing this shit fucking almost twelve years now. I know how to like. Yeah. Get back to being comfortable, but in terms of writing new bits, I just don't feel like it's there. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. it's it's weird because you always expect you look ahead and you you want there to be some kind of like you know epiphany or change in the in the way you grow as a comic, but really that doesn't happen. You have an understanding of how to write jokes in your own voice. You get there, that takes maybe about five six years, and then that's it. That's the fucking comic you are. No, for yes. me, it's no, different. yes, and then it only you, you only get better when you have a larger audience. No, I think that when you have the hour to crack. I think that I always thought it was some sort of like gradual thing where it's like a like sort of like you could plot it out on a graph where it's like a just diagonal line but it's more like steps it's like you have like a creative two or three weeks and then you plateau for like six months and then you have another creative two or three weeks yeah and i don't, I don't agree with this, the five or six years i think you just always do get better if you just keep fucking i've editing. gotten i'd say i've actively gotten worse in the last year but that i felt stagnant for like two a years a lot of comics also get worse too yeah especially after they get famous but it's also hard and fucking i mean you know it's different because you were you were working on a ton of other shit, and New York is hard when you don't get the spots. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I also don't think about things in a funny way anymore. I don't think. No, you're out of your mind. Or, you well, do. at least in terms of how they would function as stand up bits, because I think maybe like, I think you know what it is is honestly is through like Twitter and other outlets I've been able to write jokes that are more in tune with my sense of humor, which isn't really palatable when it comes to stand up. I mean, stand up is learning how to take the things you find funny. And then make them comport to sure. a like at least in my case. I mean, I write bits. yeah, yeah. So course. there's a setup, there's a punchline, there's additional punchline, there's maybe another angle, another punchline, three tags, and that's how you write a fucking joke. Uh-huh. And that's how it just was for a long time. Yeah. And with the benefit of things like Twitter or maybe just talking with people that I like, is that I can go, hey, what about this? And then they laugh at the premise. I'm like, nah, I got what I wanted. <laughs> and you, you want to be able to do that with stand up, and you can't. You really, you have to take something that's, and that's why a lot of stand up is fucking just boring as shit to watch. Yep. Even if it's comedians that I know that off stage are very smart people, mm-hmm. you know, and have like analytical minds, it's like, yeah, this Trump guy, you know, he's pretty bad, huh? He's kind of like, you know, all that fucking Star Wars, you know, Harry yeah. Potter bullshit, that shit slays in the stand up comedy world. That oh, shit yeah. does so well. Yeah. Because it's a fucking trite observation that you dumb down for drunk people. Yeah. And that's what stand up is. But the challenge is really relatable. <laughs> it's fucking babies. Yeah. But and unless you have unless you have your own audience, you really don't I mean, I guess you could just take your club spots and bomb every night doing fucking, No, the challenge is bomb fun. every single night doing doing comedy that you like, or you can continue. I mean, I think I was personally my my issue was that I've featured for so long and I just had to learn how to do well as a feature. And then that's like it. I don't. Yeah, it is different. It kind of breaks you, and you don't really like stand up anymore, right? Because mm-hmm. you just you're the setup guy for the yeah, whole yeah, fucking yeah. show. Yeah, I get that, but I think the challenge is finding finding is your finding, audience. It, it's it's finding it in between the middle is the sweet spot where yeah, of course it's harder to be creative and be true to yourself and also kill. But that's the fucking challenge. And it may you know maybe it doesn't fucking happen. I don't know, but that's that's what you you want, you know. And some jokes might not work in a mainstream club, whatever, but. I don't know, man. Stand up's the only fucking thing I like to do. Everything yeah. else is gay well, when, shit. It, when you crush, it feels great. When you crush with new it's shit, it's the best feeling in the not, entire world. Yeah. Well, I mean, heroin's better, but getting your know, dick sucked. I've never your done dick sucks better. Sucking on titties. I don't really like. It. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Gaming's better. Honestly, playing gaming, games all night, eating you know, at a Korean buffet. Gaming is not better. Korean barbecue. Podcasting but. feels better. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, podcasting. Then having bad. a new bit that crushes. Yeah. Um, that none of those things. Going to Korean better. barbecue, Taking getting nap, high, that and feels better. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't stand up <laughs> at all. Um, you yeah. know, most. But that's the thing. Most of stand up sucks. Drawing pictures but. of Arthur Chu all day. That feels great. <laughs> it sort of is like a drug. I feel like like chasing it. Oh man! Wow, dude, that's, that's so deep. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, Thanks, guys. <laughs> just blew my mind. Whoa, yo! What? Have you ever heard of norepinephrine? <clears throat> dude, Mike Stork tried to have that conversation with me one time. I love Stork, but what's wait? What, I don't even know. I don't know. One time, I just remember one time we were we've been talking for like two and a half hours. And then uh, at one point he's like, uh, you know what Nora Pernephrine is? And I was like, well, I got to go, man. Yeah. <laughs> I can't let this angle happen. This conversation. Ah, uh, fuck. 
Dude, the Tom Myers Bam Margera tour. I would follow it like fish, dude. We if we could do that. Yeah, hell yeah. We could if we could Fucking if we could make that in the tour parking lot. happen. <laughs> yeah, then it's then we retire. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing else. Dude, if I could be the, the Tom we Myers. We made it. We the impresario it. of the Tom Myers and Bam Margera comedy <laughs> tour. That would be like if yeah. you told us 10. We're high like, you shit know what? 10 we're years done. Ago. Go ahead. Have comedy, ladies. Yep. Yeah. You'll never produce anything this good. Yep. That we'll would go. be like a, a a fucking salvia hallucination I, of mine <laughs> yeah, yeah. when I was nineteen. It would really would complete. Be- <laughs> it would really complete the podcast. Yeah. That would we wouldn't need to do anything after that. <laughs> that would sort of put a nice little bow on it. Yep. So we did the podcast for three years. We made this. We, t- we forced thing all those ever. girls to start their own podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. that makes that make a lot of. And money. then we did the Bam Margera Tom Myers comedy tour. You're welcome. And then we're able to. We're able to leave in peace. I go off to whatever I'm going to do. Stav dies. No. Adam lives off his wife's podcast money until she gets tired of that, and then that ends. Oh, I think she probably is already. Yeah. I live a long, fruitful life, raising children and grandchildren on a meadow with a farm, fresh berries. It's so funny that you think that's how your life's going to go. It will, dude. It's You're not going to get control of your weight. It's going to end tragically. You are such a hater. I'm not a hater. I care about you. No, you don't. You just want to you say bad, mean things to people to make them feel bad. It's not mean. It's not mean, dude. If I was it's if I was sitting little... here, look, if I was sitting here smoking five and a half packs of cigarettes a day, my you eyes said, are my eyes are yellow. I'm having tumors removed not, from my mouth, and I was that like, was a random tumor that had nothing to do with and, my weight. And I was, like, I was like, I was like, I'll stop smoking when I'm 45. That's not even what I'm this, saying. At man. worst, this has taken five years off my life. I'll live all the way to 65. Whatever, bro. I can just continue to smoke. You're a hateful chain little smokes, bitch. Cigarettes. It's gonna be. Fu- I am gonna rate. I'm gonna be bouncing my fucking children on my knee. My grandchildren on a meadow. You'd be lucky if you still berries. have a fucking knee by whenever the time you think this is going to happen. You really think you're not a hater. You I in your yeah, heart believe you're saying something true and good to your friend right now. I think it's like, yeah, uh, I, think, I think it's like it's at no. I mean, if you want, if you honestly, I do think like, y- like, yes. I mean, I'd like it may be harsh, but I'd like, I do think you need to have some kind of like fucking wake up call. Like what change? Like what changes have you made that are like permanent changes? I'm not fuck. First of all, I'm not talking about this on the fucking podcast. Oh, why but not? You are, huh? Why not? Because it's not. I'm not trying to fucking talk about it on the podcast. Not talk about what? Like a diet or whatever. I mean, yeah, there's that's. It isn't funny, and also it's like you're not most, helpful. Most of the podcast isn't funny. Yeah, we got a couple of good things in there. That yeah, whatever. We're done. Nick, the Nick podcast is with. over at this point. I'm not trying to fucking. Have this episode is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that too. I've had a fucking terrible. I mean, this, but but like, do you, do you not like? Do you, like in in no way is it. We don't, like, we don't have to talk about shut it. Up. Is it in no way? There's like that. The, there's no way to express any kind of like concern. Saying I'm going to die is not the way you, you don't know how to talk to people. That is your no. But I mean, problem. no. Hold on. And and this oh, is but not I've known the way you. To I've known you somebody. for years, and like I like this. This didn't start with like oh you're like going to die. It's like it's like like. R- r- I've like watched you lose teeth, you know. It has be nothing bedridden. to do with having a fucking. That has nothing to do with fucking being fat, dude. Losing teeth? Are you kidding me? It's a completely different dental thing. You also literally don't know how to fucking talk to anybody. It is not helpful the way you speak to me in any. It like it, you're not helpful. You're not fucking supportive in well, any what's way. Helpful? You're what's helpful? What's this? Sometimes you're a mean piece of shit, what's, and telling me I'm gonna fucking die over and over again is exactly that. Then what's like? What is supportive then? Uh, just fucking th- what we're doing now, having a schedule so I can fucking plan my life and go to the gym and fucking eat well. That's supportive. The podcast no, was but stressful like what's, before. What's, what's, what is the correct way to like express concern? If it's a problem then where it's like uh, my tone is wrong. I mean, I, I like, sure. I can, I can easily change that or address it. Yes. Your tone is wrong all the time. That's your se- That's your personality. I still having- think it's coming from a place of love, though. It's not... It's it not doesn't like matter he's, if it's coming from a place of love. Listen, you, we're not, I don't want this on the podcast. He's not trying to be a dick. Can we, we can, just we stop can cut this fucking too. We can this. cut this too, yeah. But it's like... It's no, not- I mean, there's people that like also are like that care about you that listen to the show. I don't know. It's like not... The show which- will never help me lose weight. The show is a fucking job. Every, the only thing the show will do is get people to mock my weight. It's not going to be fucking helpful. 
It's fine. I don't give a fuck. But I am cha- I am fucking. I have made a concerted effort. The last year of my life, I was getting my fucking shit together for real, and then I hurt my fucking foot. And the last year has been a fucking incredibly unstable year for me. I'm not even talking on the mic anymore. But it's like <laughs> they got a sign. The show, the bar we do the show at, they have a sign in the bathroom that says "No racism, no transphobia, no sexism, no homophobia." No ageism. Yeah, oh. No ableism. Is ageism real? Fuck old people. Yeah. <laughs> like, who cares, dude? I mean, I get, yeah, it's real. I mean, I can, I can, uh, like, my grandpa's like, they, once you get to a certain age, it's like, you know, you're going to die soon. Right. And right, it's right. not like, maybe I got five good years left. It's like two. And it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to, I'm like, the next thing, the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to die. Right. The next big it's life. It's not event. even like, I wonder what the new James Bond movie is going to be like. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to see that. <laughs> There's not going to be anything. The only thing that can possibly happen next <laughs> is that I die. Damn. And I'll never get, know another iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Once, you get, sad. once you get to that point, it's like they're just miserable. And yeah. he's lived a good life. You know, yeah. I mean, he has a big family that he lords over with his shitty opinions, <laughs> yeah. which is all he ever wanted. <laughs> That's you know, right. Yeah. Was to impose his, 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 you, you patriarchal know, patriarchal. Yeah. Right. Have, have an extended family of 20 people who he could yell at. <laughs> and it's like, you know, he just doesn't seem happy, which is fucked up. You know, my other grandma was like that. She died. My my grandpa on the other side, he was just like, done, like you know, yeah. he had like a stroke or something. Nice. He was in the hospital, and then he was just dead. So he seemed okay. But my <laughs> other grandma, she spent like five years in a fucking nursing home, just slowly oh, dying. The she, nursing home is the worst. Yeah, it's the worst. Yeah, I'm trying to get got. If I'm in a nursing home, someone put two in the back of my head. That's what everybody says, and then guess what happens? You end up in the fucking nursing home. Yeah, you will, not yeah. me. I'm dying early. I mean, if anyone's dying early, it's it's me and you. Adam's gonna live forever. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna. Adam's be a gonna. Damn get, shame. I mean, Adam's gonna be one of those guys that starts getting plastic surgery. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would You're gonna be look awesome. like Phil Spector, dude. <laughs> your stupid hair and your fucking stupid earring, looking a little Chinese. Yeah, right. Because your eye, you just I pull used your to eyes be so cool. Tight. That's my favorite. Is I'm like gonna get collagen guys. lip injections. Make <laughs> yes. them huge. You know those old guys. Guys that are still like trying to dress like it's fucking 1985 or whatever. Yeah, I they love have, that. Like, the shitty mullet, you know, yes. like haircut and the shitty sunglasses, and they're like, "God, I was actually cool back in the day." No, you tried to be right, and right, you right. weren't. Yes, all the cool guys died. Exactly. That's yeah, why you're still alive. That's my best. Uh, that's my favorite Fran Lebowitz take, where she talks about like. How every gay guy now is a fucking loser because anyone who was cool had got AIDS and died. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fucking good, man. <laughs> she fucking she's funny as shit. Damn. Wow. I just started comedy. Obama was. Wow, dude. In it's office. almost 2020. It's fucked I'm, up. We're almost gonna. We're Adam's old, already dude. 30. Yeah. I'm 30. Holy Damn, shit! Damn, you're old and ugly. And then you're gonna be 40 soon. Yeah, Pretty you're soon. basically 40. Basically, that's insane. I'm on the wrong side of forty. Dude, life is <laughs> life sucks. I know, dude. We're just gonna keep di- getting older. And it just dying goes and so shit. fast. Yeah, that's people how we like, love are gonna die. Bring it back to like you know the grandpa thing. It's like that must like it must feel like you were fucking sixty five like two weeks. Oh my prior. god. And now you're just going to be dead. Yeah, and all your friends, like half your friends, are just dead. Dude, my grandparents. My 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 grandma's like lifelong best friend. They went to nursing school together in Jesus the forties. Christ, that's how long ago they knew each other. Yeah. Me and eldest baby is from fucking nursing school in the forties. No, her, her best nursery friend. school, nursing school, pre K. Yeah, no nursing, school. nursing school. They oh, nursing. Nurses. They were oh, nurses. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, she was like, they were her best friend was over at their house. Damn, your grandma's old. And uh, she fucking. Uh, She's like going upstairs to go up to the bathroom and she's oh. like, I'm just going to go up to the bathroom and like misses reaching no, for the railing. No, just goes backwards. No, fucking fuck. splits her head open. Ah, dead. Cool. She's just fucking, fucking like, you know, she's in a coma for a couple of weeks. The family was like mad at my grandparents, you know, because they were like blaming for what? them. Yeah. I, be, I, I don't for know. For making like slippery just, stairs. Yeah. 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 For leaving that banana peel. <laughs> yeah, it was this stairs. fucking whole thing. But she just like watched her friend die. Jesus. And like Christ. from like a bullshit <laughs> accident. Yeah. 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 Where like me as a resilient young man, if that happened, I'd be like, fucking gay ass stairs. Yep. You'd beat the fuck out of those yeah, stairs. Dude, dude. I would fucking cut. I family would over everything. Punch through the 
the stairs. Yep. yep. Destroy them. I would bounce back. Death before dishonor. You know, uh, but if you're old, you can't you're bounce done, back. Dude. That's it. That's why I, I want to die young to have the saddest funeral. I just want, all your friends are still I alive live, yeah. and I want to live forever. You think about that, about who's going to be like sad and who won't be sad. When I die? Yeah. No. If you died at, like to, today, you, you never think about like. Like Maybe girl, when I was more depressed, like a girl that fucked you over, like if she's oh, gonna come. To that yeah, funeral. when I'm depressed, I feel that. That's what you think about is girls that fucked you over. <laughs> yeah. I wonder yeah, which like, girl. What a spiteful, shitty little person you are. Nah, I mean, no, I, it's called depression, actually. Yeah, I, yeah, it's I like get a where you're coming from. You're a spiteful. Think of. You're a spiteful man. I think you're a closed off, emotionally closed off. Uh, yeah, Nick just thinks about his tools lacks, rusting lacks without emotional his intelligence. Care. No, I don't. I don't think about that. What do you think about? When I think about death, I immediately try to think about something else because I'm terrified <laughs> yeah. of it. It's so scary. But you don't. I, I know. I mean, you don't have depressed. Me, I have that. Literally feeling. every I time I every every time I wake up from a nap, I I think, oh, one day I'm just not going to wake up from this. Damn. Every single fucking time. That's why. Every That's nap so I insane. take. Every nap I take, I think about one day I'm just going to fucking die. I haven't thought about like dying in quite some time. I think because I'm happier now. Yeah. Now I don't know how to. Now I feel weird because I'm happy. Like I wake up and yeah. I'm like, oh, I get to. Like nothing is bad today. And it's weird and it makes me feel uncomfortable. But when I'm depressed, I think about dying constantly. You know what I didn't think about it? When I was fucking drunk all the time. That's why. I mean, yeah, well, yeah maybe. Obviously. <laughs> I wish I could go back to that. <laughs> dude, you can, dude. One day. Let's make a little more money. Once, Let's get once a TV I, show. Once I get, once I get back in shape, I'm going to turn into an alcoholic personal trainer. <laughs> and that's, that's also going to be the screenplay that I don't write. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. An alcoholic personal trainer. And one of his clients is, uh, I don't know, some dumb bitch. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Fuck. There you, you were losing me, but I'm back in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he can, he, he accidentally smashes his head in between the plates on the Bowflex machine. Oh my God. And mm. then he can, it's not hear, he can hear what women are thinking. <laughs> oh. Awesome. And it's, I was thinking he could hear what the weights are saying. Yeah. Now he can talk to all his <laughs> exercise equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A man that can communicate with the barbell. 